Hey everybody, today we're going to make Trisha Yearwood's crock pot tenderloin, except I'm not using a tenderloin, I'm using pork steaks, and you can use uh, any type of pork that you want. Uh, the tenderloin would be real lean and all, but um, I'm just using what I have, and it is this Boston butt steak. So... What I'm going to do is uh, pitch you down, and then we'll get started on the recipe. So, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut the pan on, because you uh, rub the meat in, with some seasonings I'm going to tell you about, and then you brown it on each side, and then you put it in the crock pot. So I'm not putting much oil, I'm using canola oil, um, just a tiny bit to brown this up. And so I'm going to show you, I just went ahead today and put the seasonings together, but I'm going to tell you what's in here, and there, I doubled what's in here so what you see is double what the recipe calls for but you use one teaspoon of garlic salt a fourth of a teaspoon ginger a half of a teaspoon thyme uh, I just use some salt and pepper I just use my judgment on that and I believe that's everything so we're gonna just, I'm going to take my finger and mix that together. And I've heard people that have made this recipe say that it is really good. So I thought I'd give it a try. I don't cook pork that often. And my family loves pork, um, certain types of recipes. So I'm looking forward to making it. And it, there are several pork steaks in here. It looks like a lot of fat. I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that doesn't really uh, get in the recipe. Well, I know what I'm trying to say, but it doesn't sound right. I hope that I can uh, get that off. All that fat. And what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and cut as much of this fat off as possible and I'm going to go ahead and brown my meat and when I uh, get that done I'll come back and show you the next step. I got the meat all browned up and we're ready to go on to the next step but while I was um, browning the meat I was checking my mail and I received this and it was so cute I just wanted to show you and it says, you don't look a day over fabulous. And it's just, it said on the box, it's a fun novelty cup. And it's got this little bouncy straw that's so cute. And I love the color. And um, so anyway, thank you. It didn't say who sent it, but thank you for thinking of me and sending it. I'm going to enjoy using this. And thank you so much. That makes me feel good. So I'll put you back down. And I wanted to show you, I'm so glad that I decided to cut the fat off because it was just loaded with fat. And I think the recipe would have been basically ruined if I hadn't have cut all that off. So, um, that's that. It's kind of disgusting. And I used just my kitchen scissors um, to cut it off. And these really aren't made for kitchen scissors. It's just what I use. I know that Dollar Tree sells some uh, scissors in their kitchen area. Someone had asked me where I got mine, and I've used those before, and they're good, um, but I just normally just use regular scissors. So there's that. And here is the meat that I've cut up, and um, I got it browned, and I was going to tell you 
on the liner, you know, I, I don't use liners, but I have seen the liners used and mentioned that I'd like to try them. So someone sent me these. I've used one. This is my second one. I loved it when I used it the first time. Cleaning is so easy. And um, anyway, I've loved them. And thank you for thinking of me and sending me these. And I'm going to be getting more. It, uh, it's just great. So you have your meat now in your crock pot. And you want to have two cups of um, chicken broth. And as y'all know, I make my own just putting some of this uh, chicken flavor bouillon in water. It just helps save so much money when you do that. And you can make your chicken broth the strength that you want. And to the um, chicken broth, you add two tablespoons of lemon juice and I'm just using this and I'm just guessing at two tablespoons there's one and there's two and then you add a tablespoon of soy sauce and there is that and let me give it a stir. And I just stirred that up and I'm going to pour it over. And when this is done, we'll come back. It's going to be completely uh, as tender as it can be. You can shred it or you can serve it in pieces or whatever, but I'm going to take the meat out. I'm going to put the broth in a pan or a pot, and I'm going to thicken it so we'll have a broth to put over. I'm not sure if I'm going to make mashed potatoes or rice, but a, uh, a gravy to put over either one of those. So I'm going to cook this on um, high for four or five hours and um, it's getting up in the day just a little bit so I'm cooking it on high but we'll be back and see how it tastes hey y'all we're back and the pork roast is done so I'm gonna um, show you how we're gonna go about making the gravy that goes with it all so I'll bring you down here is the crock pot with the meat in it. Excuse me, I forgot to get a, a flipper is what I call this. And so I'm gonna get the meat out and it is really, really tender. And so I'm gonna just put it on the plate and it's just falling apart. As you can see, and I can just pull those bones right out and throw them away. Uh-oh, I dropped some. See, the bones just come right out. So, we almost have the meat out. Okay, there we are, and I'm going to set this down over here, and I dropped a piece on the floor and that's bugging me. Okay, so now what we want to do is take the broth and get it into the pot. So that's going to be real easy with this liner. What I'm going to do is just pick it all up. This is, I'm going to wipe my um, um, slow cooker 
and it'll be just clean and ready to go for the next meal. That is really a wonderful idea, whoever came up with that. So I'm bringing this over, my liner over to the pot, and I'm taking scissors, and I'm going to cut the liner so that my broth will come out into my uh, pot, then we'll be ready to make some gravy. And I lost where I cut the hole to try to get that last little bit of broth out. There. So I'm going to move this crock pot out of the way. Pull this up, and what I'm going to do is turn the heat on high to get it going, but I'm going to take about half a cup or so of the broth and put it in a bowl. Now I'm going to be letting the rest of that heat. I want to make sure my burners, yeah, it's working. Sometimes when I take these burners out and clean the pans and all and I put them back, sometimes they don't want to work. But I'm going to take some cornstarch and I'm going to put about three tablespoons, not heaping or anything, but three tablespoons of cornstarch in the, um, bowl of uh, broth that I got. So there's one, two, and three. And so I'm going to stir that up, try to get it real good and smooth so that when I Put it in with this broth, there's no lumps or anything, and it'll make a really nice broth. So you can see that that uh, mixed up real well. There's no lumps or anything. So I'm just waiting on this to come to a bowl, and I can already see. Uh, bubbles forming. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pour this into the pot of broth. And stir for just, um, it won't take long. It's already thickening. You wouldn't believe how good this smells. And I've watched Trisha Yearwood on some TV shows, uh, her cooking TV shows, and she seems to be a really good cook, so I'm sure this is gonna be delicious. And this is already thickened up to the amount of um, thickness that we want. It's a nice consistency. And so, our supper is done. I cut that off, but it's still wanting to bubble a little bit. So, what we're going to have is green beans. And the way I fix those, this is just a can of green beans. I put a little butter, a little sugar, and a small amount of bacon bits. And then I just let it simmer real low. Then here is the mashed potatoes. I made them uh, with real potatoes this time. And I think I did them like most people do. I boiled them uh, until they were soft, poured off the water, added some salt, pepper, milk, and um, just mashed them up and butter. I added uh, butter. And so 
that's that. And then I have garlic bread and I uh, turned the oven on. I put it on 350 because I knew it would be in there for a little while while I was doing everything, but I think you could put it on 400 and be just fine with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the bread. My family is a big garlic bread eating family. So I've got a piece of garlic bread cut. And let me grab another plate. So, um, I'm going to put some potatoes on the plate. And kind of spread those out. And then I'll put some green beans. After I taste this, I'm giving it to my husband and He's not a big green bean eater. Here is our garlic bread with the butter that came on it melted. Then, I was wanting to do this so you could see. I'll get our meat back. Now you can um, shred this if you want, but I'm not going to, uh, I just, I'm not real fond of shredded meat unless it's like barbecue. So I'm getting the meat put on. And there's that. And then the gravy. And I'm sure we're not going to use all this gravy for this meal, so I think I'm going to save it for whatever um, we have next to have on some rice or more potatoes, like for tomorrow, because if it's as good as it looks and smells, I'm going to hate to get rid of any of it. So this is today's meal. And I would like to taste it and tell you what I think of it. I feel like I'm crooked. Okay. So, there it is. You will not believe how good this is. Trisha Yearwood, if you're watching, this is a hit. This is so good. That gravy is awesome. The meat's so tender and flavorful. Um, it's such a good recipe and so... Uh, I'm trying to think of a better, <coughs> a better word than cheap to make. But it just doesn't cost a lot to make this, and it is so, so good. So, I hope that you give it a try, and that you love it as much as I do, and I know my husband and daughter are. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. It won't cut off. Houston, we have a problem.